Dear chess friends, welcome to your side of chess channel and welcome to really one of the most aggressive games that you see in your life. Today we see the fish, the big fish, the latest version of Stockfish playing against another top engine Viriditas in Fisher Random Chess. But this game is so beautiful, so epic, so spectacular. It's almost impossible what Stockfish did here because Stockfish will brutalize, dismantle, destroy checkmate its opponent in only 23 moves really really wild stuff it's almost impossible to play such a fast a winning game in top engine level but stockfish will play here with one of the craziest attacks that i've seen in my life it's almost like its whole life is depending on this attack that's how stockfish is attacking in this game pay good attention put your seat belts on and enjoy in this fisher random chess play by stockfish 16 against viridita so with the white pieces in this particular setup that was pre-arranged stockfish played the move e4 and now after knight to g6 the good part i think about the setup that we see that white and black have the immediate opportunity to castle i like uh, simply these positions in french fish and random chess when at least we can secure the king in a fast way and then of course um the better player that can improve maybe his pieces in a better way that could find maybe good opportunities for the minor pieces that can maybe occupy uh the open files that will find tiny little better square sort of in, in your opponent's positions will eventually win the game so that's why i like future random chess because it forces you to improve somehow your position but as I said, I also like the position where we have the immediate opportunity to secure the king by calcium because if the kings are a little bit strange, then there are simply too many attacking motifs. Maybe the game uh, is always too much favorable for white or something. In this particular position, black can also castle kingside and will have, I think, a solid position of the king. So that's why here from kingside calcium, Veridit has played e5, Stockfish with the development knight to g3, we have d6, and now Stockfish sends some opportunities to attack the queen side because the rook is here already in b file so stockfish is saying i'll expand now a little bit here on the queen side we have king side casting also by viridina stockfish plays now c4 and after move bishop to d7 i really expected here stockfish to continue the pressure on the queen side maybe to play even something like i don't know c5 maybe preparing i don't know knight to b3 c5 because it's not the same but i think it's a similar structure like you have in this king's indian uh, positions where black has this pawn uh, small pawn chain c7 d6 e5 and maybe it's trying to hit the position with the move f5 this would be i think the normal strategic plan uh for black on the other hand i really expected here why to make further progress like in many king's indian structures uh here in the queen side but stockfish said i had it enough I played simply too many passive moves now in this particular position. Stockfish broke the position immediately with the beautiful aggressive move D4. Sacrificed the pawn just in order to get this 4 versus 3 pawn majority on the king side to create really an unbalanced, an asymmetrical, a uh, wild dynamic position now. Now it becomes really a spectacular epic attack here by Stockfish 16. So after move F4, uh, here Viridita says, okay, I have this extra pawn i'll support it i'll protect it with the move c5 we have f5 by stockfish after knight to e5 we have the immediate attack f6 this is the way they go if you take of course with g takes f6 obviously you'll face many many tactical problems after this sequence rook to b3 for instance uh, is the opportunity to get somehow the rook on the g file you could maybe cut off um uh, the third rank with your pawn move d3 but now look at this bishop to c3 you get your maybe knight here on uh, e8 to protect your square g7 but still bishop to e5 f takes e rook takes d3 and now uh, knight to h5 with rook to g3 i think is a devastating position for for black i would not left you play this position anymore i think after a couple more moves you can resign because the attack the flow uh that white will get here i think is not defendable anymore for black there are now maybe some wild ideas how to hold this position but against Tokush I think this is a devastating this is a brutal position to handle so also if you play bishop to f6 instead of g takes f6 after move f6 by white we have this idea sacking the rook and now with same similar tactic move these rook to b3 as we said rook to g3 queen gets here on h6 so again a messed up game for black so that's why after move f6 we have b5 Viriditas attack now the queen side we have queen to g5 threatening checkmate on g7 immediately so that's why Viriditas cuts off now uh the g file by playing knight to g6 and now knight to h5 
this is now already already very tricky again you don't want to play something like this because obviously you run into similar tactical sequences also f g takes f6 again queen to h6 is winning the game for white so it's not working knight to h5 here viriditas played now b takes c4 and notice now viriditas has also a very important strategic concept which are which is now two connected pass pawns on the c and d file so if in any case black defends this position then it's completely winning for black because of this pawn storm that will eventually come here in the center of the board and on the queen side so it's simply a devastating position then for white so white needs either to destroy here uh white's position on the king side or will simply uh, lose the game so here from b takes c4 stockfish obviously takes out now the pawn on g7 we have queen to c6 getting the queen active into the game and now queen to h6 with the preparation now to play the move knight to h5 and to deliver checkmate on g7 so that's why viriditas played now knight to c7 in order to get the knight here maybe on e8 or an e6 to control further the g7 square that's of course the main threat liberating now the square for the queen and then uh, get the queen on g7 deliver checkmate so here after move knight to c7 stockfish played a good move rook to c1 getting a new opportunity for uh, the rook hitting also the pawn on c4 you will see now in the next couple of moves why it was so important to play this move rook to c1 knight to h5 for instance in this particular position is not working because as we said knight to e8 would be then defensive move e4 is weak d3 c3 c2 d2 could happen here from black's perspective so it's simply too slow the attack that white is building so rook to c1 very very interesting idea hitting the pawn on c4 stockfish leaves it, some flexibility here because it says if something goes wrong at least i can hit of course now the pawn on c4 here viriditas played now king to h8 in order to get the rook on g8 protecting then the square g7 in a different way with the rook not with the knight so viriditas sensed also the possibility to maybe get the knight somehow into the game from c7 get it more active into the game but i've also asked my question here um i've when I analyzed the game, I, when I analyzed the game at home, I was really curious why Black didn't take out now the pawn on e4. It seems quite tempting because you're threatening also a nice positional idea, queen to e3 to to trade off the queens. If the queens are off the board, as we said, if Black defends this position, if Black simplifies the game enough, then it's game over for White for sure with the move queen to e3. But now knight to c2 would be very very annoying to handle because look at this. Now you have to play knight to f4 to prevent knight to h5 you do have to play it now if you play here a knight to f4 then you sacrifice the knight but it's only a temporal sacrifice because look at this after queen to g6 that uh, black would probably play in order to defend his position white cannot pick up the queen now on g6 because if white plays this now that was my analysis at home i was really curious what's going on here on the board uh from queen to g6 now f takes g6 is trapping the knight on g7 so the knight doesn't have any more uh room to escape and in the next move bishop to f6 will happen the knight is falling black has this still the c and d pawn that are rolling here on the queen side so it's a devastating suddenly position for white so after move queen to g6 here you have to play here actually knight to f5 this would be then the winning sequence after the potential queen to e4 in the beginning of this tactical line after move knight to f5 look how crazy this position is you get this one bishop to f5 now we deliver a check here you trade off the queens but now f takes g7 comes with a direct threat against the rook you have to now lose the tempo uh, by picking up the pawn and now you lose the bishop on f5 this would be then the winning sequence for instance you play d3 to let the pawns roll now you play here knight to e3 and then the pawn is falling here on c4 uh, then we will eventually grab many of these pawns so with one piece up this is of course completely completely winning for white so really really wild stuff so that's why from rook to c1 viriditas played king to h8 in order to get the rook on g stockfish continues with bishop to g3 is preventing in some lines as we have seen knight to f4 was in many lines the main defensive motif to protect here the square h5 what you do here now here in the continuation Viridit has played rook to b4 for instance if you play d3 if you try to counterplay here if you try maybe to let this pawn roll as i said here on the queen side then this rook to c4 is protecting this weak square e4 that we have talked about now previously the queen to e4 move leads into complications for white because 
back gets a new defender into the game. That's the issue about this move rook to c1. Rook to c1 in the beginning it seemed to me really like a strange move, but it was a spectacular move that leads now into new problems. Look at this. If you play rook to b4, uh, then the issue is here now you cannot play again this move knight to h5. Knight to h5 um, leads into this lines with rook to g8, and again I think this position is defendable. But uh, after move um, rook to b4, the winning idea is here to play bishop to h5. And now whatever you do for for instance, you play a rook to g8, then we have this one, bishop takes g6. You have to play now with the f pawn because if you you cannot obviously take with the h pawn, but now after f takes g6, this pawn is rolling on the f file and now the game is over. For instance, in this particular position, if you get the king on g8 in order to prevent bishop to g6, then we have this one, rook to b4, c takes uh, b4, knight to b3 is coming into the game and now maybe in some lines you're trying, I don't know, queen to e4, the problem is now this line. Bishop to d6 is here actually winning the game. Really, really wild stuff. So actually, uh, even the rook on f8 gets trapped. Even if you try, I don't know, here d2 instead of queen to e4. Again, we play queen to d2. You're trying maybe even to trade off the queens, which in this particular line is not working anymore for black because again, the rook is hanging and now it's again a devastating, a messed up game uh, here for black. So now the simplification idea is not working. So see... With the whole idea with to play the move d3, it's simply too slow because of a rook to c4, maybe rook to b4, look at this, as we said, rook to b4 and then bishop to h5 is a devastating, devastating move, which is really destroying black's position on the king side. So, after move bishop to g3, here Viriditas plays rook to b4 immediately, Stockfish plays now queen to, uh, bishop to h5 anyway, and what to do here? Again, the same problems. Let's see, if for instance, a queen to e4 happens, then we have this one as a resource. Knight to f5 to deliver checkmate. You could maybe try rook to g8 here to prevent again the checkmate on g7, but now look at this. Knight to d6 is a beautiful move because after queen to e3 that we have talked about in many lines would be a defensive idea for black. We can even trade it off, but now look at this. With knight to f7, you get even a beautiful and stunning checkmate. So after knight to f5, what you could do is of course knight to e6 here to protect everything, but again, it's not working. Rook to e1 hits the queen, the queen drops back, and now we sack the rook, and now the g7 square is unprotected. So very, very wild stuff. So what you do? After move bishop to h5, what you could also do instead of queen to e4 is to play king to g8. But you probably got the grip here now. Bishop to g6. What to do here? After h takes g6, we have a rook to f4, rook to h4 leads into a stunning checkmate sequence. Even if you play f takes g6, then the move f7 is winning the game. You can play, of course, rook to f7, rook takes f7, and now the queen comes into the game. Rook to f1 will happen, so it's not working. So we have seen now queen to e4. King to g8 is not working. So all of these normal defensive moves are not working here for black. Viridit has tried knight to e5 to get back into the game. But Stockfish gets rid now of the key defender, bishop to e5. If you play here d takes e5, then the issue is a beautiful, beautiful tactical sequence. This wasn't played in the game, but let's practice some tactics here. Pause the video for yourself, please, please, at home. It's a beautiful tactical sequence. Pause the video and try to see now the winning idea here for white. This is now a potential line. As we said, after move bishop to e5, Viridit has played rook to g8 in order to protect somehow again the g7 score. But let's see what happens if after d takes e5. Please pause the video and try to see now the best continuation here for white. Okay. Here, there is a beautiful possibility of knight to, e, uh, knight to e8, protecting, uh, pardon me, attacking now the pawn, on f, uh, the rook on f8, and threatening, of course, the lever checkmate. What you do here? If you play here, something like, I don't know, knight takes, um, uh, knight takes, um, uh, e8, then of course queen to f8 is winning this game on spot. So that's why you have to play here knight to e6 first, but now we hit play bishop to g6. This would be the winning sequence after f takes g6. Obviously, you cannot play h takes g6. After f takes g6, now comes this stunning idea. A beautiful queen sacrifice. Look at this. Queen to g7. After knight takes g7, f takes, g, uh, f takes g7, hits the king. The pawn is protected, so you have only this resource. And now with rook to f8, this would be a monstrous, a beautiful, and epic uh, rook uh, checkmate here on the back rank. Really, really immortal tactical sequence here by Stoffer to see. So from bishop to e5, here we have rook to g8 by uh, Viriditas. 
and again please pause the video and try to see now again the winning idea here for white stoffers played that move immediately and won the game after a couple more moves so please as i said solve also the mini puzzle and the end of this brutal and spectacular, spectacular gameplay by stoffer 16. okay again we have the same motif bishop to g6 sacrificing the bishop what you do you have to now accept the challenge but now look at this knight to h5 is liberating now uh here the diagonal for the dark score bishop what you do if you take of course here the bishop then the problem is now queen to g7 again with the same motif here uh queen to, rook takes g7 f takes g7 you drop back here with the king and now you get rook to f8 a, a beautiful beautiful stunning checkmate so therefore move knight to h5 here viriditas covered now the g7 score but stockfish plays now the beautiful f7 we have now again this idea uh stockfish promoted here the queen through the through took the rook on g8 we have uh king takes g8 and now rook to f8 here played by stockfish we have queen to uh, knight takes f8 and now queen to g7 a beautiful beautiful stunning check made by the rook uh, by the queen and knight's activity so sacrificing the rook of course deflecting the knight from the defense of the square g7 impossible beautiful sharp tactical line here by stoffer 16 so pooh, what to say to move 23 here it is it's winning for white beautiful beautiful game here played by stockfish really one of the fastest games that we have seen we have seen some games in which stockfish destroyed the opponent in 23 moves but the game was not over the game was prolonged uh for maybe 10 15 moves be, uh, but then the 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 engine the uh, the opponent resigned because it of course calculated that it could be over very soon but uh we had never i think such an early checkmate by stoffish in move 23 really really crazy uh, attacking game here played by fish in my opinion really one of the best fish randoms games that i've seen in my life so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really, really enjoyed it a lot interesting tactics here by stoffish 16 if you want to see more brutal spectacular games like this check out our common the chess games played by computer series where some more games played by stockfish alpha zero lila zero dragon engine and many many more and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what do we say chess is the best of course